Hello everyone, welcome to the Best My Test TOEFL Independent Writing Video Series. In today's video, you'll learn how to write the body paragraph. In the body paragraph, you'll explain the reasons and ideas to support your essay's thesis statement. A TOEFL essay normally has three body paragraphs. Each body paragraph gives the reader a detailed explanation about one main idea. This idea helps to show or convince the reader that your idea is true or correct. In addition, each paragraph must flow from one to the next. This is called coherence and is done using transitions. Transitioning between paragraphs can be done at the start of the new paragraph. So, what does a body paragraph usually include? It includes a transition statement, topic sentence and supporting sentences. Using more complex transitions will help you get a perfect writing score, but it is not necessary to do well. For example, your body paragraphs can use simple transitions like body paragraph 1, first of all, firstly, or to begin with, body paragraph 2, in addition to, secondly, or furthermore, body paragraph 3, finally, thirdly, or lastly. We'll look at a few high-scoring essays that use both complex and simple transitions later on in this video. After the transition comes the topic sentence. The topic sentence will summarize the body paragraph's purpose. It's meant to tell the reader what the main idea of the paragraph is about. Finally, you'll need to write the supporting sentences. These supporting sentences are used to explain in detail the main idea. The supporting sentences need to fully explain the topic sentence using anything to help the reader understand. You can use things like reasons, examples, or even personal experiences. Since there should be more than one supporting sentence in each body paragraph, remember to use transitions to connect your ideas between supporting sentences. I encourage you to look at our video how to connect ideas in your TOEFL independent essay for more information on all types of connections and how to use transition words to connect ideas later. Later in this video, we'll look at example body paragraphs and see how transitions are used to help make the ideas flow coherently. Okay, that's pretty much it for the structure of a body paragraph, but we're not quite done yet. Now I want to teach you about how to write a good body paragraph. What you've just learned were the basics, but to get a high score, you'll need to write more than the basics. There are three things you need to do to get a high score. Write a good topic sentence, use transitions to organize your supporting sentences with logical connections, and show variety in sentence structure and grammar, as well as a wide range of the appropriate vocabulary. We'll show you how to achieve that with examples. Now, let's first talk about how to write a good topic sentence. There are a number of things you should keep in mind when you write the topic sentence. Make sure your topic sentence is concise. In other words, don't cover too many details and make sure it's not too broad or too narrow. Make sure your topic sentence gets right to the point. Don't beat around the bush. When there is too much surrounding the topic sentence, the reader might interpret the main idea incorrectly, which could lead to confusion later on. Also, avoid the following when writing the topic sentence. Avoid using facts. Don't use facts as topic sentences. Remember, you're using the topic sentence to introduce a point or opinion you're trying to make. Facts are better used in your supporting ideas to help convince the reader of your point. Avoid talking about the what. Don't just talk about the what. Talk about the why as well. That is, don't just think about the effect, but its cause. Avoid telling the reader that you're going to tell them something. For example, don't say, I'm going to tell you, or I'm going to speak about, when introducing a topic. The reader already knows that you're the writer. It's irrelevant to say this. Let's look at some examples of bad topic sentences. Driving is stressful. Four out of ten drivers use cell phones while driving. Why are they bad? Well, the first one, driving is stressful, is too broad. A good topic sentence should be, 
Driving on the highway in heavy traffic is stressful for many motorists. We've narrowed down the topic to be about a specific situation while driving. This will help the reader understand your essay much better. The second one, 4 out of 10 drivers use cell phones while driving, is using a fact and only talks about the what. It does not give the reader enough information to understand what the essay is about and what opinion you have about this fact. A good topic sentence would be, using a cell phone while driving should be banned because it causes a lot of car accidents. You should immediately be able to see a difference in that topic sentence as it provides more detail on the topic of the essay in addition to expressing where you stand on that topic. Okay, now that you've seen the difference between good and bad topic sentences, let's look at even better examples of topic sentences. Suppose the thesis statement is, in order to succeed in the classroom, college students need to utilize the resources available to them throughout their academic careers. Here are three good topic sentences that support this thesis statement. One important resource that all college students should utilize for success is tutorial services. Another important resource for student success is frequent use of the library. In addition to using tutoring services and the library, college students should consult with their advisor on a regular basis to monitor success and to make necessary changes where needed. Notice how these topic sentences help the reader understand what the essay will be written about. Well, they actually do more than that. They also help the writer organize the main idea of the essay. If a writer creates clear topic sentences early in the writing process, they can use those to organize the essay and create unity in each of the paragraphs. Okay, so now you have a basic understanding of how a good body paragraph should be structured. Now we're going to look at a few examples. Let's say your essay topic is, some people say that advertising encourages us to buy things that we really do not need. Others say that advertisements tell us about new products that may improve our lives. Which viewpoint do you agree with? Use specific reasons and examples to support your answer. And here is your introductory paragraph. Some people believe that advertisements lure us to purchase goods that are not of necessity. Others are of the view that advertising has a positive role to play in modern society, helping us choose between competing goods. In my opinion, I strongly believe that advertising encourages consumers to buy unwanted items for three compelling reasons. So, as you can see, the thesis statement is, in my opinion, I strongly believe that advertising encourages consumers to buy unwanted items for three compelling reasons. Now you need to write three body paragraphs, with each paragraph providing a reason why advertising encourages consumers to buy unwanted items. Do you remember how to structure a body paragraph? Remember, there are three parts. Here is the basic structure of the body paragraph again. A transition statement, topic sentence, and supporting sentences. Let's look at how we can write down steps one and two for this thesis statement. Before we show it to you, remember this. Body paragraph one. First of all, firstly, or to begin with. Body paragraph 2, in addition to, secondly, or furthermore. Body paragraph 3, finally, thirdly, or lastly. Can you come up with your own transition and topic sentence? Go ahead and pause the video if you want to create your own before we show you our version. Okay, here it is. To begin with, advertising creates unrealistic expectations about products with exaggerated and misleading claims. Finally, you need to provide supporting sentences to support your idea remembering to transition between connecting ideas. For instance, advertisements for prescription drugs create unrealistic expectations about the effectiveness of the drugs and its side effects. In these kind of advertisements, the visual images only show healthy, happy people. It never truly shows the actual downside effects of the drugs. Similarly, Beauty and health products may not live up to their promises, resulting in wasted consumer dollars. Disclaimers are often hidden in very small print, on product packaging, and in out-of-the-way spots in ads. Now, notice that we use similarly to connect the first and second example. 
When you want to connect two ideas and show these two ideas are similar in some way, you can use similarly, likewise, by the same token, or in the same way. Also, pay attention to the sentence, beauty and health products may not live up to their promises, resulting in wasted consumer dollars. Here, the participle phrase is used. Remember, when we talked about showing variety in sentence structures as part of writing a good body paragraph, well, here's a perfect example using the participle phrase to achieve sentence variety. Without the participle clause, the sentence is broken up into two independent sentences. Beauty and health products may not live up to their promises. This results in wasted consumer dollars. If you want to learn more about how to show variety in sentence structure and grammar, check out our video, How to Achieve Sentence Variety in Your Essay. All right. Let's look at the next body paragraph. Secondly, multinational corporations create meticulously crafted ads to entice consumers to purchase their products. For instance, fast food chain McDonald's advertising artifacts tries to lure children with toys and playrooms in order to sell kids' meals. Moreover, vigorous advertising campaigns are promoted across a plethora of channels, such as TV, billboards, online, and so on to grab consumer attention to purchase goods that may be of no need to them. Consequently, people become more materialistic as advertising compounds their desire to own more items. So, in the second body paragraph, we use secondly to begin the second reason. Notice we use moreover to connect the first and the second idea. Using transition words like moreover, furthermore, in addition, or additionally, can help you add more than one idea coherently. Also, notice at the end of the paragraph we use consequently to show the result. You can also use other transition words like as a result, as a consequence, or therefore. You can learn more about transition words showing cause and effect relationships from our video How to Show Cause and Effect Relationships. All right, we've seen two body paragraphs. Let's look at the third and final body paragraph. Lastly, people cannot just choose to ignore advertising because advertisers use many underhand methods to get their message across. Posters have attention-grabbing words or provocative pictures. Furthermore, some advertisements today are even being hidden in what seem like pieces of art or public information. As a consequence, people don't realize they are being marketed to. By targeting people's unconscious thoughts, adverts are a form of brainwashing that take away people's freedom to make choices. So, just like the first and second body paragraphs, it starts with transition words. Lastly, it also uses furthermore to connect ideas. It has the transition word as a consequence to show the result. In summary, to write a good body paragraph, you need to write a good topic sentence, use transition words to connect ideas in a logical order, and use a variety of sentence structures. As I've mentioned earlier, I encourage you to look at our videos about how to achieve sentence variety and how to show cause and effect relationships in your essay. You can find them on our YouTube channel. This is the end of the lesson, and we hope you've enjoyed this video. In our next video, we're going to teach you how to write the conclusion paragraph. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget to check out our website at www.bestmytest.com.